Hi, I'm Dr. Rich Blana, host of the Sex Act podcast. In this, the seventh edition of the podcast, I'll continue our discussion of sexual identity and how unhelpful thoughts and outdated personal scripts and mental images can undermine it. Nowhere is this better illustrated than in the self-talk of Anastasia Steele, the central character of the widely popular Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy by E.L. James. If you're at all interested in sexuality and in act, read, read the trilogy. It's fascinating. When I read the three books a couple of months ago, I was fascinated by the evolution of Anastasia's sexual self-talk, that inner dialogue that she has with herself regarding her evolving relationship with Christian Grey and her sexual odyssey as a submissive partner in a dominant submissive relationship. As someone who specializes in using acceptance and commitment therapy to help people unleash the power of their sexual mind, it was fascinating to me to see Anastasia do just that over the course of the trilogy. I was also intrigued by the way Anastasia's sexual self-talk could be interpreted from an ACT perspective. Throughout the three books, we see Anastasia's sexuality and her sexual identity unfold through her self-talk. As she struggles with her sexual thoughts, her personal scripts, her mental images, and her emotions regarding her sexual identity and her relationship with Christian Grey, we are brought to that mythical line in the sand, the one she must cross time and time again, to get to the next level in her personal sexual growth and her sexual relationship with Christian. And over the course of the three books, we see how Anastasia learns to unleash the power of her sexual mind through acceptance and commitment to Christian and their relationship. Throughout the early stages of the book, we're introduced to Anastasia, and again, this is mostly through her own self-talk, as a plain not very highly sexed college journalism student uh, lack, lacking in sexual experience and understanding of her own personal sexual identity. And she constantly is comparing herself to her sexy, self-confident roommate, Kate. Kate is perceived by Anastasia uh, as attractive, sexy, stylish, outgoing, brazen, uh, assertive, and filled with self-confidence. Everything that Anastasia tells herself, she is not. Now through Kate, Anastasia, uh, she meets Christian Grey, who's young, single, rich, handsome, and the featured speaker at her college graduation. And she has to interview him. When Christian shows up unexpectedly the next week after graduation at a local hardware store where Anastasia works, She's astounded by his obviously feigned attempt to run into her by accident. This is really carefully planned by him. Uh, when he brushes past her to get something off the shelf, she is both mindful of and amazed by the sexual currents that run through her body. I mean, she literally describes these as electrical currents that turn her legs to jelly and her sexual organs to stir with newfound life. In the early parts of the trilogy, she constantly struggles with her unhelpful, outdated personal scripts, sexual images, and emotions related to her sexuality and her ability to please Christian uh, and her relationship with him. Her mind races from past to present to future as it ruminates endlessly trying to figure out who she was as a sexual person, who she is as a sexual person, and who she is becoming. So it's classic uh, description of this runaway mind that we talk a lot about in ACT, and you can just see it play out in Anastasia's self-talk about her sexuality and her relationship. Uh, and as this sexual self-talk is going on, uh, Anastasia is mindful of and can't deny the sensations she feels in her body, these sexual sensations that you know she describes uh, occurring everywhere from her belly to her nipples to her vulva. Uh, these sexual sensations are new to her, and they're described in fascinating detail in her self-talk. So you can see the mindfulness component play out as Anastasia is very mindful of what's going on in her body and, and, and her mind in a sexual sense. Now, much of her self-talk is unhelpful, 
uh, as it focuses on trying to control, avoid, and eliminate these sexual thoughts, feelings, and images. So she's constantly trying to control what's going on in her mind. Now, rather than coexist with this unhelpful sex talk and explore her sexuality with Kristen's guidance and support, she tries to control it. I feel like shaking the book and saying, Anastasia, if you really value being in a relationship with this guy, the best way to quiet your painful thoughts and troubling emotions is to accept them and carry them with you as you move forward and experience firsthand you know, everything that's going on in your mind. Don't try and figure it out all in your head in advance, but take carefully planned steps and experience it. As you read about Anastasia's struggles to explore the world of dominant submissive relationships, you can almost hear her ask the question, am I willing to coexist with my troubling thoughts and painful emotions regarding these things Christian wants me to try? in the service of pleasing him sexually and strengthening our relationship. This is the classic act-based approach to taking values congruent action in the service of one's value. So throughout the three volumes, you can see Anastasia come to countless lines in the sand regarding the new sexual experiences and places that Christian wants to take her that she's never experienced before. And as she approaches these lines in the sand, she has the choice to either let her unhelpful sexual baggage keep her from moving forward, or to bring it with her and take another sexual step uh, towards her value, values congruent goal of strengthening her relationship with Christian. Now eventually Anastasia begins to trust Christian and she begins to directly experience some of the dominant and submissive roles and behaviors that are part of his sexual identity, and then to really assess how they felt for her. At this point, after directly experiencing these things, she would decide if these experiences are, uh, she's really willing to incorporate them into what uh, E.L. James calls the soft limits list. Um, so after, in other words, instead of trying to figure all this stuff out in her head, she starts to trust Christian and directly experience some of these, stuff, these things, and then really decide whether she wants them on her soft limits list or not. It was really interesting to see how her eroticism evolves over the course of the three books, and how her sexual self-talk becomes more and more helpful. In time, Anastasia learns that the best way to deal with her troubling thoughts and painful emotions uh, related to sexuality is to accept them and to bring them along for the sexual ride of her lifetime with Christian, this guy who she's learning to love and trust. To her surprise, her sexual identity begins to change, and she actually starts to see herself as a powerfully erotic woman uh, who's not only able to match, but even to exceed Christian in their hedonistic pursuit. So it's a fascinating look at sexual self-talk that you know, starts out as being very unhelpful and, and turns around and through direct experience starts to become more helpful. So take a look at the three books. They're fascinating, and I look forward to seeing you next month.